solutions. <laughs> well, I, there, are, there are two issues. Um, the first one is a federal issue around how to deal with the, with the currency. And normally you deal with it in two ways. You establish a, uh, you, you isolate the economy from the currency. In other words, you create a sovereign wealth fund. But that wealth fund has to be un accessible by politicians, otherwise it's not isolated from the economy. And if you want to see how to do that, I would recommend to go to Norway. Done a very good system on that one. Uh, the other thing you do is around a budget surplus, uh, and that means you encourage people to save, which normally means reducing their debt. And you can do that by different tricks, and there are some good tools out that used in other countries. Uh, the, the second issue then deals with the, with the manufacturing sector, and it's fundamentally important that the manufacturing sector is kept alive, because if you do not do that, you risk ending up with an economy with a booming resource sector, decent service sector, and a collapsing manufacturing sector, resulting actually over time in huge structural unemployment. And that means you can afford the unemployment, but it will give rise to social tension, because you have a large number of people unemployed. That is not desirable from anybody's point of view. Uh, so in order to keep manufacturing um, competitive and in this area, you need to A, uh, increase value adding, so you kick them up the value added chain. That requires education, training, all this kind of stuff, and some of that needs to be instigated by, ensured that it's assisted by, and maybe sometimes assisted with from government in that sense. Uh, you also need to ensure that you have uh, uh, huge foundations of new firms in new competitive domains. You know, and that means you, do, you need to focus on where firms are started. And they are normally, for example, in universities, they are not started by academics, they are started by students. So you need to make it very easy to students to start firms. Um, and you need to ensure that you assist these firms in being part of the resource sector boom through a very clever industry participation policy. And examples of that exist already. I mean, very few of these problems are new. They've been solved mm. elsewhere first, so learn from where it was done well. So, for example, in Ontario, Canada, they've been very, very successful in achieving a very competitive manufacturing industry, actually the most competitive in Canada, based on the industry participation policy with the resource sector. So there are a number of things to do this. And why should you not let manufacturing decline in addition to the social issue? Well. It has to do with the cost of rebuilding it. The speed of knowledge development is fundamentally different in these three sectors. So during a given unit of time, there is one unit of knowledge developed in the resource sector. Same unit of time gives you three units of knowledge in the service sector, uh, or non-traded goods sector. Uh, and uh, same unit of time gives you 15 units of knowledge in the manufacturing goods sector. That means if you let that go over one unit of time, you have lost 14 units of knowledge that you kind of slip behind. And you can see that very rapidly it becomes very, very expensive to catch up again. And if you let it go far enough, it becomes so expensive to catch up that it will cost you more than the net revenues of the resource boom, which makes the whole thing a very dodgy proposition. Big challenges. Um, you're about to head off again. Uh, when yeah. are you back in South Australia? I am back in Australia in the second half of September and I have my final public lecture on the 27th of September in the evening and all the details can be found on the Thinkers website, uh, which I think is www.thinkers.com. SA.gov.au. <laughs> I have to remember all those three things. Thank you. Your own, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much.